Hey everyone, Kurostal here, welcome back to Shin Megami Tensei 5. So in the last episode we beat the game, we got the ending where we sided with Yuzuru and Koshimizu. So, spoilers, if you haven't seen those episodes I'll talk briefly about the endings. So I went and looked up the different endings and turns out siding with Yuzuru is considered the chaos ending. I thought it was going to be the neutral ending. So Ichiro is of course the order ending and Shohei is actually the neutral ending. Again, I thought it was kind of strange because I thought Yuzuru and Shohei would be switched around between neutral and chaos, but this game doesn't have as much of a straightforward or traditional law versus chaos as some of the other games, so I think they've taken a new spin on it. Now there is a fourth ending, which is people call it the secret ending, and the secret ending actually branches off of Shohei's ending or the neutral ending. So you need to do the neutral ending and then partway through it branches again if you've done enough of the optional side quests in the game, which includes side quests like Amanozako, Fion Mukumail, and uh, Konsu, and beating Shiva. So I'm going to spend a bit of time doing the extra side quests because I do want access to all the different endings. Now I've loaded up an old save file. You can see we're back at the Temple of Eternity. This is before we chose our ending and went ahead. So I'm going to continue playing from this save file, which means everyone's a little bit lower of a level than where we left off. We're also missing some party members like Odin, for example. I'm going to, I'm not doing this one as a stream. This will just be a collection of clips because it's going to be a lot of touch and go. I'm going to go back and get some of those items and quests that we missed. And I'll record anything that's kind of of note, particularly the side quests and their outcomes. So, hope you guys enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah. This Shinobazu Pond. In center, you find small man made island called Ben Tenjima. Ben Zaiten or Sarasvati enshrined there, yeah? Hey, North, get you to Shinobazu Pond, huh? You already been? Here, right between Chuo Street and Uena Naka Street. Which, which? One closer to train tracks, Ueno Naka Street. As a little aside note, also, uh, if you recall, in the last episode, there were a couple Mimons that I went back and got. And on this save file, I haven't gotten them yet, so I have to go refine those ones as well. So if you see my Mimon number fluctuate, that's probably why I gotta retrace my steps. You looking like Nahubino, how make me jealous. Oh how cute, look there's a bunch of Jack Frost here. There's a large stone statue of a demon. Oh look there's a broken one on the side, that's so sad. You absorb their power? Sure, I don't want to walk back here. Damn angels, damn demons, wrecking havoc all the time. Could use a little peace, yeah, yeah? I don't remember if I got this one in the last episode or not. <laughs> so I'm recording it anyways. Oh, it's another big statue, dude. I'm kind of wasting these but not actually having good demons with me, but I have plenty of grimoires. Oh, I look so happy. How many Mimon you found? Might as well find us all. <laughs> I don't think so, man. Why are you crying, little guy? Demon's power, human's knowledge. Thought was all we needed to be Nahobino again. We were wrong. So this was the Lilim that wanted me to get a bunch of Mothmen for her, because she thought they were cute. He handed the Mothman capture pot over to Lilim. You're the best. You really got me my Mothmen, thanks. Wow, it's completely full. I see them all fluttering about in there. 
But how big is this pot? Those mothmen are not small. Here, this is for you. Oh, thanks, I guess. Oh look, I found I found Fion in the last area. He's like up high on top of this hill overlooking that level 99 abscess. Hi Fion. Hello. Hey, it's been a while. How'd everything go last time? Recently it seems like a lot of parties are competing to rule the world. Does everyone really want to be king so badly? I hear you're in the race too. Come on, no need to hide it. I have at least enough knowledge to see how things work around here. Wait, are you- you're a human though, right? But you're supposed to be- you're like a demon that- you're like a human that attained demon? I don't know how this works. Me, please, I'm not the ruling type. I'm sure you understand. Oh, okay. We have to go figure out how to get his quest so I can recruit him, because I like him. I want him in my party, and apparently he's a really good ice demon. Okay, I hit level 99. Let's max out- wait! Oh no, look, my strength is 99. I thought the max was 99, not 100. I'm gonna be at 99 strength, I'm gonna be missing that one point. That's gonna bug me. Oh well, what can you do? Okay, gosh, remember those glory things that I was trying so desperately to get in the last episode? There were like two of them on top of the buildings over here. I finally figured out how to get to them, but it was a pain in the butt. So I, first you have to go like up through here, this path to get to the red abscess, the one that is level 99 that I didn't beat. You have to run past it here to the right, and then you have to jump off the cliff onto the building. Now the problem is that in order to get to each glory thing, you have to jump onto different buildings. So you can't get them all in one go. So I have to jump from here, pick up the glory, and then cycle all the way back Go this way again, jump from the cliff again, run along the buildings, jump the other way, grab the glory, and then there's also a Mimon up here, so I had to jump down, go all the way back around, and then come back up here again to get to the Mimon in the other building. Not to mention that there was at least one time where I missed the jump, so I had to climb up here like four different times just to come and get all these things. It's kind of freaking annoying. You better be worth it. Huh? Don't tell me you follow rooftops all the way here. From hill way over there, you gotta be real pa- Oh gosh, you're like rubbing it in my face, thanks. Thanks, Miss Mimon. You brought Maka? I hope. Hey, not bad. Best of luck. I don't know how many more Mimon I'm gonna get. I only did extra exploring to get a couple items that I wanted that I missed. I don't think I'm gonna scour the lands for the rest of these, and maybe if I come across any by accident. Just a lot of great essences. I could do without that. Oh, we flip back. Number 200 is bomb set in times four. Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, I'm good, Gustav. <laughs> Collecting materials is hard labor. You need to be nice to your elders. Well, what are you going to do? Sure. Oh, I can't thank you enough. The thing I'm looking for is sleep gems. I need you to bring me two. Oh, that's easy. Got him. Oh yes, I can crush these and make sleeping powder out of them. Ah, oh, you really helped me out there. Take this as a token of my thanks. Oh yay, I'm Rita Showers. Thank you. I might ask you for some more again, and if I do, I'll be counting on you. Oh, so I can trade sleep gems for Amita showers to him. Nice. Oh, okay, so if I switch to the relics tab, I can sell all by pressing Y. How come I didn't see that earlier? I think the reason why I didn't see it is because if you switch to selling consumables, the button disappears because obviously you don't want to sell all your consumables, so you only see plus sign or sort. So I just assumed when I tapped over that 
sort would be the only button. Oh, well, this is convenient. Looking to sell, are you? <laughs> Say, there we thanks. go. You're welcome, Gustav. Look at how happy he is. Need anything else? <laughs> See you around. Oh, Miyazu, you're still here at the fairy village. Um. Uh, is it true that Tokyo is going to disappear? My brother said it was a secret. But he said there was a way to save it, and he asked me to wait until everything's over. Right. That reminds me, have you seen that lady at the edge of the village? She almost looks like a royalty from another country. Her name is Isis. I've actually talked with her a few times. I think Isis is actually some kind of important goddess. She's really nice and super easy to talk to, though. <sighs> my brother said I could wait here where it's safe. All this time I've depended on my brother and let him take care of everything for me. But for seeing all of you and the fairies, I decided that if there's anything I could do to help, then I want to do it. They have me treating the other students here, so I'm going to keep at it and see if there's anything else they need. <laughs> Even someone like me can do their part. I'm going to keep at it and see if there's anything more I can help with. Oh, poor Miyazu. She got shafted. She's just stuck here. Major character. Really no plot development. The, her last appearance wasn't even in a real cutscene. It was like a fake cutscene. You know, I like her scarf, but I can't get over how her mittens really clash with the rest of her outfit. Okay, so remember that quest I picked up in the fairy village from Silky? She asked me to go pick mandrake roots, but I wasn't sure where to get them and the map didn't show. The reason why I was confused too is because mandrakes are low-level demons from the very first area of the game. So it turns out when you accept the quest, they actually spawn a bunch of mandrakes in the little forest just north of here. And you're supposed to kill them, and Silky warns you that as you pick more mandrakes, it will attract other monsters. So. As you fight the mandrakes, more and more, it starts with just one mandrake, and then some narcissus start to appear as well in the battle. So it starts with like one of them, and then two of them, and then three of them. Uh, of course, at my level, that wasn't really a big deal. So how goes gathering the mandrake roots? You obtained fairy talisman. Wonderful. Thank you. I should be able to create a variety of medicines with these. Okay, so if you recall, we had a quest earlier where we had to come fight this punishing foe, and I didn't. So Kelpie needs us to kill Girimakala in order to get his head and use it as a watering can for the fairy village. So that's kind of morbid. So you'll see my party's changed just a little bit. I've refused my Odin. Now this Odin's a little bit different. My previous one had a mix of different elements because I wasn't sure what I was fighting. So this Odin is focused mostly on using his attack Gungnir because I totally forgot Gungnir has innate uh, piercing, which means that even if something resists physical, Gungnir won't uh, be resisted. I should have used it more against Lucifer <laughs> in the ending video, but I guess it didn't occur to me. So to power it up, I also have Critical Aura, because I don't need... Uh, there's also Impaler's Animus, but I don't need the Pierce, so this was the best I can get for now. I kept Thunder Rain, and then I basically stacked his physical attack. So I have High Physical Pleroma, I want to increase his MP, because we always run out MP with him. So I had Great Mana Spring and High Restore to help with that. Null Force to block his uh, weakness to Wind, and... Abyssal Mask is just nice, it makes it so he doesn't get afflicted with ailments as much. I also refused my Vishnu. Now this Vishnu is very similar, still Mudo and Hama based, with healing. Got some buffing, great life spring, and then Dekaja was really useful because I can uh, basically dispel things on enemies. So still a support character, but better than he was before. And then I also fused Idun. Uh, I should have fused her much earlier in the game, but I didn't have the demons I needed, and I didn't bother hunting them down. But look at how cute she is. She's got a, like a Red Riding Hood kind of theme to it, and she talks like a pop star. So her signature skill is Golden Apple, which is basically like Meteorama, but it also buffs your skills for three turns. So it's kind of like uh, Luster Candy. It does cost quite a bit of MP. Her attacking move is Hama. She has Diem Rita for single target heals and dispelling ailments. And then I also inherited Bowl of Hygieia on her. This is basically like a charge attack that makes it so the next heal heals more and it can heal above max HP. 
So that'll be useful and makes her heal stronger and also kind of gives you an, like a health buff. So to round it out, I have Health Pleroma to increase her healing, Null Electric to cover her weakness, Boon Boost to make the boons from Golden Apple last longer, and then she also protects herself against ailments as well. So all in all, she's quite good. Apparently a lot of people use her into endgame, although she falls off to some of the DLC and like really high level demons. I should have used her earlier in the game. She's only level 46, but I want to use her because she's she's cute. Let's fight Gear Mikala. I'm going to basically annihilate him. Because I'm so much higher than him. Oh, well, okay. That did like nothing. I feel like if I... If I use Mirakumo, I'm gonna annihilate him in one turn. That's no fun. I want to test out Idun's skills a little bit. Look at her, she's so cute. I saw pictures of her online where people show off her animations. She like skips around and stuff. I guess you don't see it here unless you wait long enough, but she like skips around the field a little bit. Let's try her golden apple. This is a unique skill for her. Speaking of which, I found out that choosing whether to eat the apple or not from the quest where you save Eden from Loki has pretty much no effect. It's pretty much the same outcome either way, although it probably adds to the your personal choice list in the game for... I mean, it doesn't affect the ending, but it affects some of the side quests that come after it, depending on that. Okay, let's, let's kill him. Enough talk. Time to die. So see how Gungnir is going to pierce his resistance. So now I have his head. Let's go deliver it back to Kelpie. Hey Kelpie. I got something for you. How's it going? You get that Kiri Mikala's head? Oh, this calm, quiet music. It's nice. You obtained Soma. Yay, you're the best. Now I can repay the fairy village for all they've done for me. It's all thanks to you. Alright then, I better hurry back. Bye bye Okay, so with that, we should be finished all the fairy quests or fairy village quests related to that area, and that will unlock something else. Also look, Helpy found his way back to the fairy village. Oh look look, the trees are starting to look better. The other fairies haven't seemed to notice, but that's okay. I helped because I wanted to, you know? Thanks for helping me out. Aw, you're a good guy, Kelpie. <clears throat> Seems you and Kelpie have saved this village. Though the other fairies may not be aware of what you've done, I witnessed every moment. I truly cannot thank you enough. Oh, thanks, Oberon. Very cool. Oh, here's uh, Isis that Miyazu was talking to. I have an old story to tell. If you have some time, would you like to hear it? Oh, I wasn't expecting to <laughs> get an entire story out of this, but uh, sure. <laughs> Long time ago, a prince met a girl suffering from a terrible disease. The girl was desperately fighting against the cruel fate that the gods had dealt her. The prince was moved by the girl's courage. None know what he was thinking at the time, but he took a blade, cut his arm, and made the girl drink his blood. Okay, well... Turns out the prince had a miraculous ability. He could use his blood to lessen people's suffering. The prince gave blood to the girl every night. Slowly but surely, the girl grew healthy again. That's like the opposite of an... of an STI. <laughs> the tragedy came swiftly. The prince was drawn into war. For as long as he had his blood, he could not be defeated. The prince filled wine barrels with his blood in order they be given to the girl regularly. Wow, that must have taken forever. He left for the battlefield, but in the end it was for naught. He did not survive. Without the prince's blood, his soldiers fell one by one. The kingdom fell, but with the blood that was left, the girl was cured. To this day, the girl enjoys perfect health, completely unaware of the prince's sacrifice. 
the end. What do you mean unaware? Like, was she unaware that she was drinking his blood the whole time? Did she not know where he went? Did she not know that he died? Did she not wonder? Like, hey, where's that guy that used to make me drink his blood? Mm. Well, did you find that interesting? It was alright, not at all. The setting needs work. Oh, uh, sure. I feel like, you know, in the world of SMT, maybe, you know, anything's possible. That, that probably really happened, so sure, let's not anger you. Thank you. I made up the latter half, but it was a good... I made up the later half, she says. But it was a good story, no? Thank you for listening. Here, this is for you. Oh, thanks. Wait, so you made up the bad ending? Oh, it's you. You're Naho, aren't you? I heard you defeat Oriok, the Demon King. Yeah, he actually, he's in my party right now. I don't like him, though. I'm Isis. Due to certain circumstances, I'm waiting here at the moment. I wonder, could I ask you to undertake a dangerous job? My son Horus is on a rampage through a place called Sotokanda. Could I ask you to kill my son and bring me back his head? Okay, okay, Isis. You want me to kill him? Or why his head? Yes, he is no longer the Horus that I know. As he is now, Horus has lost the power of the sun. Now he's just a monster that violently wanders the land. Soon he will lose all of his remaining divinity and become nothing more than a common beast. I want to offer Horus's head to the gods of the Nile. I will then wait for the rise of a new sun god. Sounds like you're over your son then. Will you do it? Sure. I shall leave it to you. I'll remain here and keep watch. Alright. Will do. Okay, so doing all the fairy village related quests unlocks this quest from Fion. So when we talk to him, he's gonna fight us, and then afterwards he'll be available for fusion, which is exciting. I should have done this earlier when I was doing my actual playthrough, but I didn't I didn't want to look up which side quests I needed or guides or anything like that out of fear of spoilers. But I do like Fion's design. He's pretty cool. He's like level 66 or something as a boss, so I feel like when I get him, he's gonna be maybe not as useful as he could be. But whatever, I can use him anyways. Eden's here because she needs a uh, XP, I guess. I'm probably gonna destroy him in a couple turns. Yes. No, I'm actually searching for a lord to serve at present. A king, if you will. Hey, that's me! I could be one. And I don't just mean someone strong or with authority. I have to be a noble king, one who will strive to make a world a better place. <sighs> Though in truth, you would almost never expect to meet a king like that. Hmm. But of the many I've met in this world, there was one from whom I felt that potential. Indeed, I do mean you. In a world where the strong devour the weak at every turn, you selflessly aid those in need. You helped everyone at the fairy village, too. Help the weak and steer the world toward peace. Your actions are truly befitting of a king. <laughs> Guess it doesn't matter which ending I pick, because... I mean, good for you, Fionn. You'll stick by me no matter what, right? I'm still confused, because he's like... Like a Celtic or Irish like folk he hero, and he's... He's like, he's a mythological figure, but he's like, supposed to be human, but he's a demon in this game because he's mythological. I don't know, we talked a lot about this before during the playthrough, about what it means to be a demon and how the game is so unspecific. Yes. All that's left is to test whether my whether your strength surpasses my own. Well, I already beat you once. It's been a while since we last faced each other. I'm sure you've grown much stronger in that time. Can you overcome me at my full power? Let's say we find out. You're on. Good. Much obliged. Finally, an opponent I can take seriously. Now witness my power. Fionn Makume licked his thumb. That's a really weird way of describing it. I know in the folklore, he like... drinks the blood, or like he... He like eats some magical salmon that gives him knowledge and then his blood becomes infused with something, but you could have said like Fionn Makuma like drank his blood or like reached his full power. You just go lick his thumb, that sounds so unimpressive. Fionn Makuma's knowledge expanded, increasing his magic. Okay, I guess that sounds kinda cool. <laughs> I imagine you know well of the knowledge the gods so desire. Wait, so you get knowledge how do you get knowledge by you need to find a human? To get your knowledge. How do you get knowledge from your own blood? Are you your own human knowledge source? Whatever, we'll just overlook that. A lick of my thumb and I can briefly gain the same power as a Nahobin. Oh, okay, you're gonna explain it to me. I should stop. I should stop talking. The time has come. Well then let's begin. Ah, this music. 
this battle music is, I think, specific to Fion and Shohei Yakumo, so both very cool characters. I like how his cape just kind of floats in midair, too. Pretty cool. He's weak to electricity, but I'm just going to smack him with Almighty. I want to try this critical aura, actually. Try what a powered up Gungnir does. Ooh, 2000! Okay, and the nice thing about my build is that Odin will get 20 MP after hitting. Because uh, I gave him high restore, so the critical aura will give him a definitive critical, and that costs like 20 MP. And then so when he does Gungnir, he gets back 20 MP, so it negates the cost. And pretty much gives him a double dip in using Gungnir, so that's nice. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but... Yeah, see, Critical Aura is 21 MP. That way I can conserve MP. I'm so smart. I feel kind of bad making him look uncool by destroying him, though. And if I'm dealing this much damage, I don't need to use my Magatsui skill, which means I could just keep regening MP every turn. This is my my new strategy, we'll see how it goes. It probably won't work on the harder, harder super bosses. Oh no, Eden. I'm sorry, I want to bring you to get XP and show off your animations. I think she still, still gets XP when she dies, though. So it's fine. Oh, Eden didn't get XP. That's fine. I'll just feed her a grimoire. Oh, hi, Oriok. Nice to see you, too. Indeed. You obtained Battle Sutra. No, more XP! Oh, Eden did get XP, she just didn't level up. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I knew it! You're everything I thought you would be and more! No. Now it's rude of me to speak to you like that. From now on, you are my king. As of this moment, my lengthy search for a lord is at an end. Yes. Naho, my king. I, Fionn Makumel, swear undying loyalty to you. I shall be your sword. Thanks, Fionn. You're cool. Oh! He just joins up your party. I thought he becomes available for fusion. Oh, there you go. That means I'm gonna need to... Oh, he's level 71. That's not bad. It even says his whole name, Fionn Makumeo. He was prominently featured in some of the trailers and stuff because he's a new demon design for this game. Including, uh, Eden is also new as well. What do you know? I feel like because I didn't get you through fusion, your stats are gonna be lacking. I'm gonna need to part with you and then refuse you to make you better. So 
Is severe physical. This is unique. Physical. He is, does good on fire and ice. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Welcome to the party, Fion. Hey, come on, Horus. Wait, Kaiwan, what are you doing there? You're not. You're not the one I wanted to fight. Jeez. So unfair ambushing me like that. There we go. I want to. I don't want to kill you in one hit. Okay, you have more health than that. Okay, good. I want to try out Fion's skill. This one's his uh, unique skill. That was pretty cool. Well, goodbye. Hey. Oh, thank you. Okay, I guess we got his head. Hey, Isis, I'm back. Mm. Oh, it's you. Have you made any progress? Hand over your son's head. Here you go. Call this progress. Hey, Talisman. <laughs> Thank you. This will allow us to keep the son's favor. I could never have done it without you. I will return to the rest of my kin now. Thank you again and farewell. Alright. Okay, so... Remember how I was saying that the Angel Dominion told me that he'd mark on my map where Kansu was? And I was like, where is he? It's because he wasn't on this map. He's actually on this very first map. So you'll see here I have a new ley line that's unlocked and it's off the map because it's kind of in a secret hidden area that I wasn't able to get to either uh, before. So let's go pay a visit to our friend Kansu and we'll probably have to fight him. I mean, even if he's on the same level as Zeus and Vizuki, I'm much higher level and I have good demons now in my party, so I think I should be okay. I also took Fion and changed his skill set by refusing him, and he's looking pretty good now. Oops, here I'll show you my Fion. So he knows his personal skill, Bufu and Agi at the strongest level, Enduring Soul, Impaler's Animus, Null Electric, High Restore Abyssal Mask. Now he's gonna learn Null Ice, I don't know if I should give that to him, because... I mean, it's nice, but I don't have any room here. I want to keep all these skills, unless I get rid of like High Restore or something like that, but... I like being MP efficient, and especially for long drawn out battles, I'm pretty much only gonna be using Bufu and Agi when enemies are weak to it, so... Maybe we'll skip the Null Ice, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, hey, little dude. Hey, take me with you, I can help with all kinds of stuff. Oh. Sure. <laughs> I like these little companion dudes. I wish they did more and I wish they were less annoying because they like squawk at you like every five seconds, but... I'm also in need of money, I spent so much money just uh, refusing stuff. Are there any Mimons around here? I haven't been to this area. That's where we started the game, like way across that chasm. Oh, 
Oh, this place has different music. There's items on the other side of that fence. Well, this is kind of cool. Is this like an entire like mini dungeon? I see a big enemy flying overhead on my map. That must be a punishing foe. There's no enemies. Lamu's essence. What are you doing here, Lamu? I haven't fused my own Lamu yet. I'll do it eventually. It says there's an item here. Oh, it must be above me. Oh, there it is. Give me that glory. This looks precarious. The random Aramitama. Uh, the items must be there. Oh, there it is. I don't know which way is the right way to go. Does my map help me at all? No, this area is unmapped. There must be an item here, right? Yeah. So. The Kansu quest line is actually, it's like three quests or something like that. And it is one of the requirements for getting the secret ending, along with Fion's and Amanozako's quests, and beating Shiva. Be careful. Watch out, I'm picking up a reading on a powerful demon, we should proceed with caution. Oh, already? But Kansu's not until up ahead, I, I believe. Well, I'm overpowered, so whatever. Oh, it's you, Seth. I don't remember your weakness. That's okay. We'll just brute force you. Because if I remember correctly, Seth has a bunch of resistances, because I had a Seth for a long time. Let's just get everyone to charge up. Nice. Not quite as strong as Odin, but that's okay. You'll get there eventually, buddy. We pretty much all have Abyssal Masks, so we all resist ailments. Charging up my physical attacks and then going for it reminds me of how I played SMT3. You just get very Kugel and then you, you use charge and then you annihilate everything in one hit. Good times, good times. Can I go this way? Is there a benefit to going this way? My map doesn't show any items over there, so probably not. How to miss this item? I can't jump down there, really, game. Okay, that's fine. We can go back for items later.
See more glory. There must be meme ones around here, but I must be missing them. Oh, shoot, I did not mean to fall. Well, hello. How do I get out of here? Like, clearly I can go through this opening, but it just... Game says no. Let's try this again. There's a hole there. I need to get that last abscess so I can figure out what these last few uh, miracles are, the ones that I'm missing. But it says there's an item here. Must be up there, hidden somewhere between. I don't got time for this, I'll find it later. Oh, that's not a door. This is a door, apparently. Yeah. Lord Konsu aims for a world where everyone can live in peace. No difference in ability, no pestilence or plague. Kind of funny, because Egyptian mythology is full of pestilence and plague. What would it be like to live in such a world? I simply can't imagine. Hey, Loa. Khonsu's vaunted aim was to restore the gods of the Nile to their former glory. I stand as a representative of the Egyptian branch, though I confess I rarely bother with public appearances. You know, I still find it like... All the branches of Bethel, if they had humans working for them, we've never come across them. And it's like... Nope, these games don't have human NPCs. I guess. Unless they're important to the plot, or Miyazu, I guess, is the exception. Ah, Naho, thank you for your help with Horus. You should have no business here. The gods of the Nile have chosen not to get involved. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well now, that Konsu boy suddenly lost interest in chasing the throne, eh? That's youth for you, I suppose. All passion and fire until something else distracts him. He's at that rebellious age. Yeah, Nubis, you're cool. It would appear Konsu found his Ba, the human that is his soul, to speak. Oh. In our family of gods, he would be the first to become a Nahobino, where he... To rise as our leader, I doubt we'd have any objections. Oh, okay. Anubis, you're cool. You should have been the representative for the Egyptian branch. Maybe giving you an update. I mean, as cool as you look, I'd like you to not be floating and sitting. You'd be standing upright and, I don't know, looking a bit more dignified. <laughs> hey, Kansu, are you home? Sense the presence of a powerful demon. What will you do? Bite him. Yes. So they sent an assassin after all. <sighs> I have to say, I didn't expect the assassin would be you. He's got a really cool design. He's one of the new designs for this game. I mean, Kansu has appeared in like one other previous SMT game, but he looked like a mummy, so they gave him a redesign for this game because he's an important NPC. I found out that Vasuki actually has always looked like what he did. He was actually a Persona and Persona 3 as well, but I don't remember that at all. And he's been in other SMT games, but his design was so complex I thought maybe it was a redesign for this game, but it's not. Uh, Zeus, actually it was my first time seeing him in this game, but he's actually appeared in a couple other SMT games that I haven't played, some of the newer ones, and so his design's identical in all of those appearances. And then for Odin, I, I was only familiar with his old design from SMT 3, he actually got a remake, or er, a redesign a couple games ago, so this game was my first time seeing him, but it wasn't actually new. So between the four of them, actually, only Konsu is completely new, so I didn't know that. To me, they were all new. <laughs> Doesn't Anaho Bino such as yourself have more pressing matters to attend to? Or could it be you've given up on the throne as I have? Let's see. Either way, the fact you, you're here means, means you must have come to kill me. But if you found your human, why aren't you Anaho Bino yet? Or where is your human? I want to meet them. I'm afraid I can't let that happen. There's something I have to do, you see. Ooh. It's the same music as fighting Vasuki and Ishtar. I like this track a lot. I've been listening to it a lot on repeat lately. 
And I feel like I've been listening to it a little bit too much. Look at those idle animations of his. I'm wondering if I should get a charge or a Impaler's Animus for my Nahobino, but some people said you can also just use another character that has the what is it, Domo Gladius or whatever it is, the charges of an ally for you. I wonder if you have an annoying mechanic like Vasuki and Zeus and Odin did, but I'm too strong, I don't think I'm actually going to see it. Oh, I forgot, I haven't covered Vishnu's weakness yet. Hey, don't abuse that, come on. To your fire, demon. Ooh, look at that beautiful kick. I like how, like, characters that have big winding kicks like that, if they have like a like a sash or a skirt or something like that, it gives it a really nice, like, flow. I feel like Odin might kill him and then Fion won't get a turn. Ooh, okay. Fion, do your thing. Oh, look at him, he is not happy. He's so cool. That didn't do much damage. Poor Fion. This move's gonna be hip with the kids. <gasps> Is this truly the end? I can't die yet. I still have to. Oh, so... If you finish him off, it locks you off from another quest later on, so I'm gonna keep him alive. Plus, you know, why kill him? He's cool. What? Are you saying you'll let me go? I see. Now that you know I have no interest in the throne, you've judged I'm no longer a threat. No. Come on. Don't misread me like that. I'm not going to thank you, but I can promise you I'll not seek the throne. I have no intention of becoming a Nahobino. Take care. I shall graciously accept your offer and take my leave. I have to quickly recover my Magatsui. Hansu left. Okay, let's go report back to Dominion, and then we'll pick up the next quest from here. Wait, why is Ivara still with me? I, I moved maps, he shouldn't still be with me. How do I get rid of him? I thought that when you moved maps, you lost your little companion. Maybe I should swap him out for Jack-O-Lantern or something. Oh, what is the situation at the Egyptian branch? You explain what happened. Oh, you left him without dealing the killing blow? Did you mean to say he has no desire to take the throne? Hmm, I'm not sure I can take those words at face value, but the Egyptian branch shouldn't be causing any trouble for now. All right, that result is enough. Good work. Here's your reward as promised. Ooh. Glory, thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> now then, I must be going. I hope the next time we meet, it won't be as enemies. Hi, Dominion. Okay, so remember this guy that wouldn't talk to us earlier? I think he has a quest for us now. You, you must be the Nahobino that slayed Khonsu. I am Amon, I am a tyrant as well as a former sun god. Seeing as you were the one to defeat Khonsu, I'd like your help with something. I want you to seek out two demons, Mithras and Asura, then I want you to crush them and take back the winged sun crest. 
The winged sun is the source of the sun god's power. Only upon its return will I become a radiant being once more. Do this for me, and I shall add my strength to your own. What? Will you lend me your assistance? Sure. Right. Wise choice. Then make your way to Chioda. They have set up a formation in front of Tokyo Station. Confront them there and wipe them out. Oh, they're together. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so this is right in front of the... The building where Ariok was stationed. You sense the presence of a powerful demon. What will you do? Stay. Well, hi, you two. I say. Who's there? Are you... You're Naho. What? That so-called hero Nahobino who killed Oriok? Hmm. Well then, Nahobino, what business do you have with us? Explain what happened with Amon. I'm here to kill you! So Amon sent you here after all. I should have known, he's been after our winged son for ages. Also, I like how I just kind of listen to any demon that talks to me and take on their quest, like regardless of whatever moral they might have, unless there's another demon that's telling me the opposite. I just kind of go with everything. With the news that Bethel's god has fallen, I suspected he might make a move. <laughs> this is an opportunity for us as well. The sun god's power will lead us to the throne. We can't let it slip away. You'll soon regret pointing your blade at us. You'll crush your teeth, slash your throat, and drink our fill of your blood. Well, that's a bit graphic. Hmm, so our young, nameless god carries a soul. How much of its power will you be able to harness, I wonder? If you aim to stay alive, then show us now. I don't know if I should go for one of them first, or if I should just blast them both at once. So people were saying that, like, charge in Shin Megami Tensei 3 increased your physical attacks by 2.5 or something like that, which is why people used it, because it was so powerful, using up a turn to do it was worth it. But in this game, I think all the charge moves now only increase to 1.8. But then, if you have like guaranteed critical and stuff, it it is higher, but not as good as it was back then. Thank you, one. Come on, get him. And the problem with Impaler's Animus is it increases your next attack and adds pierce, but it doesn't give you crit. I think there's another Impaler's skill that is even better, but I don't have it on Theon. Because the crit is good because it gives you a press turn. Oh, that's still pretty good. You may have more hands than me, but... The nice thing about Pierce, though, is that I don't have to worry about people resisting it. So I can use it against, like, Lucifer, for example. Or, uh... Demi Fiend, who I think resists everything. The only reason why I can use Critical Aura on Odin is because Gungnir has Innate Crit. Or Innate Pierce, sorry. I'll finish him off.
higher gods such as us defeated, so this is what becomes of one who has reclaimed his soul. We are fools, we misjudge the worth of humans and has cost us everything. To the winner goes Radiance, now take the sun without reservation. It will remain once I'm gone. First Bethel, now you as well, damnable. Powerful light started gathering in your hand. You obtained Winged Sun Crest. Alright, let's bring it back to Amon. Hey, Amon. Well, this music is foreboding. I sense the moment their Magatsui disappeared from this earth. Well done. Now give me the Winged Sun Crest. Hand over the Winged Sun Crest. Apparently this doesn't make any difference either, the result is still the same. I won't hand it over because I I think I want if I do a new game plus I'll do it with the chaos ending, the same one I got with Yuzuru, so I think I should stick to being good. I guess it I don't know actually. No. What are you doing? That crest holds no meaning unless it is in my possession. Oh, Nothing happens then. Okay, I literally have to give it to you. Yes. Now give me the crest as we agreed. Fine. I see my faith was not misplaced, how pleasing. Right. Those demons failed in two respects. First, they made light of the power of souls and underestimated the Nahobino. Second, they neglected to draw out the full power of the winged sun. I am the legitimate heir to its power. Or heir to its power. But they did not see that I am the one destined to carry was folly. Well, no. Now you. Now, Obino, if there was one thing I did not account for, it was the extent of your own power. I see now a demon with a soul can well surpass their own limits, transforming into something even greater than their name suggests. To say that they can rewrite legends doesn't sound near improbable as it once did. You are dangerous. If I were to let you go now, the only thing that would stop you is another now Obino like yourself. I knew this would happen. Hey, you didn't- Come on, you were nagging on me for the promise and- this isn't what you promised. Indeed, it's not. I am a deed of my word, and so I will keep it. I told you I would judge your strength and then offer my own. Well, I have judged that you are indeed strong enough. Now then, it's time you bear my strength. That is to say, I will vanquish you where you stand. I'd like to see you try. Ever since I got Murakumo, it's just abuse this attack. Look at him looking so smug as he gets annihilated. Oh, you resist darkness. Well, that's great. I like this battle pack too. Look at that zoom in on his owl face. Magic reflecting bear? No problem. Who needs magic? Why does Impaler's Animus cost 50 MP and then Critical Aura is only 20? Well, I guess the Pierce is more useful, technically. I kind of wish I had both on Theon, but... Oh, you reflect light as well. Fine, I'll just buff everyone else. Not oh, barely felt anything. Fifteen? Your physical damage only does fifteen.
I kind of wish I was able to use Eden more. Because again, seeing YouTube videos of her and all her idol animations are kind of cute, but she's too weak. Oh, come on, really? You know, you reflect magic this turn. Oh, everyone's on full health. I'm like, why can't I use Meteor Ahan? I should have just passed like a Mirakumo, but whatever. I like how when they dodge, they just kind of zip to the side because there's no dodging animation, so it looks like they're ninjas. Now you'll join me. You're gonna like it. Impossible. Even after regaining the Sun God's power, I was not enough. Is the might of a Nahobino even greater than that of the Sun God? No. No, I'm afraid you have it wrong, Father. Father? I don't know my Egyptian mythology well enough, but... Mm. The power of Ra is great enough to take the throne. The Nahobino should not have stood a chance against you. The truth is, it's simply impossible for you to hold the winged sun. You're no different than the old Persian gods. <sighs> you... You've been condemned to live as a tyrant, to life as a tyrant, thus have forgotten your true name of Ra. I thought... I can't remember, I didn't realize Amon was an Egyptian god. So you were Ra, which means that you, at one point, you held the seat of the creator, right? Because they said Baal and Ra once held it before the creator came by. Interesting. For some reason in my head, I keep thinking Amon is a, like a Goetia demon, but he's not. You cannot use the power of the winged sun as you are now. I'm afraid I can no longer call you my father, Amon. So it seem, then here. Look at that pose. It's like a JoJo pose. Yes. That was my plan from the start. I will inherit the name of Ra, no one else. Kanzu took the winged sun crest. Sorry, Naho, but I'll be taking this. Come on, I did you a favor, man. You obtained Tyrant Talisman. Nice. Indeed. Ooh, high dark pleroma. That's gonna make your dark attacks much powerful. Uh, okay, I don't know. I kind of- I don't need great life spring, to be honest. And plus, I'm gonna get Enduring Soul and maybe Repel Dark, so let's replace this. She's so cute! Nice, okay, so since I spared Konsu, that's why he appeared, now there should be another quest that unlocks after doing this. Okay, now we're back here, and we can talk to Isis again. Naho, maybe you can help. Yes, I think I could tell you everything. Please stop, Konsu. You recall how he took the winged crest Sun crest from you. He also took Horus's head, which should have been kept safe. I'm sure you already know, Kansu intends to gain the power of the Sun God and become Ra. But his aim is not the throne, nor is he doing this for himself. He's doing this to save the life of a human. A human named Miyazu Atsu- What? Is she the one that has Kansu's knowledge? Why does everyone that happens to have the important Bethel demon's knowledge all happen to be from Tokyo, and all happen to be from the same class at the same high school. That's awfully suspicious, don't you think? What will you ask? Is Miyazu's life in danger? Oh, wait, no, you told us a story! When Kansu found the bearer of his soul, he discovered the young girl was afflicted with an incurable disease. I'm puzzled why he didn't simply wait for his soul to reincarnate. Instead, he extended her life by giving her some of his own Magatsui. But even that has reached its limits. If she can't receive any more Magatsui, all she can do is wait for death. 
Kansu had been searching for a way to prevent such a cruel fate. What? What's wrong with saving her life? The answer he found was to grant her eternal life by transforming her into a god. But Kansu was so focused on saving her life, he has not considered whether that would actually make her happy. What will you ask? What's special about Miyazu? As you may have guessed, the girl is Kansu's soul, his other half. Her body has been so filled with Magatsui, she's barely human anymore. If they join and become a Nahobino, she will be absorbed by Kansu. The individual known as Miyazu will be lost. Yeah, I think that's why when Ichiro fused with Abdiel, we only heard Abdiel's voice. And then when Yakumo uh, fused with Nua, we only heard Nua's voice. For those who love Miyazu, it will be difficult for them to accept this. For that reason, Kanzu has given up on becoming a Nahobino and withdrawn from the fight for the throne. This is something that only I know, even among the other gods. Well, that's why Miyazu said that you were like being nice to her and stuff. At first, I assisted Kansu, despite his perplexing obsession with a human. But after seeing the earnestness of the girl at his side, I began to understand what he saw in her. That's why I don't want an ending where she will be unhappy. Now that you've heard everything, if you believe Kansu should be stopped, then I ask that you help me. Thank you. Then we should hurry to the fairy village. I will go as well. Oh, okay. Off we go. So I swapped out Itvaras with Jack-o'-lantern because he's cuter. And I don't mind hearing him saying hee-ho. A word. You may be forced to fight Kansu. Are you ready? Yeah. Um. I now see that you've been giving me your power. Thank you, but that's enough. <laughs> How can you say that, Miyazu? You're only 17 years old. Your life has only just begun. How did he fall for her so quickly, though? God has dealt you a cruel fate, one you must overcome. You can keep on living, together with me. But I can't. I know you're- Wait, you didn't want to become a Nahobino and take the throne. But you wanted to get the power of Ross so you'd be powerful enough and then become a Nahobino? Damn. Hi. Naho, I'm grateful for all you've done for me. As a reward, I will tell you my true intentions. I want you to hear them as well, Miyazu. Yes. I already heard. Lately, I have been trying to ascertain a way for Miyazu to continue living as she is. The answer came quite simply. If Miyazu were to become a god like us, then she would no longer suffer. I like how there's pixies in the background just hanging out. There is a condition, however. In order for a human to become a god, the faith of their followers must convert them into a divine being upon death. Wait. In order for a human to become a god, the faith of their followers must convert them into a divine being upon death. Naturally, there's, there's no time for that. Oh yeah, so I guess, you know, that makes sense from a mythology standpoint. When someone becomes famous enough and they have followers and believers, then when they die, they become, like, a mythological being. Knowing this, I found an alternate solution through the use of an ancient technique. The power of the sun god has made this a possibility. Oh, okay. <laughs> Miyazu, you should become a god like me, as I laugh evilly. This isn't what she wants. No, I understand quite clearly. Miyazu is just afraid of casting away her humanity. But, as we have seen, humanity offers only an unreasonable fate. Any fate of his be damned. Once you become a god, you'll be free from your fate and your humanity. Hans Kansu held up both the falcon head and the winged sun crest. You know, maybe we should talk to Tao about this, right? She kind of became a divine being. Maybe she has some input. Behold! This crest goes by another name, the Eye of Horus. Now I sh shall return it to its rightful owner. In the name of Ra Harakte, Harak, Harakt, grant me the divine power of the king. Oh, you look kind of cool now. The head and crest combine to form the falcon god mask. See, I wish An Anubis looked like this. Also, you have a gigantic chin. I kind of wish you didn't. <laughs> At last, I become Ra. But my work has only just begun, and this time no one is going to stop me. Oh, no fair. You brought Anubis and Thoth. You're level 82. Oh, I could do this.
What's up with this, like, mist and sunlight? It's making it kind of hard to see the graphics. It's just, like, the weather effects, but I don't think it looks good. I don't know what you're weak against. You've been weak against ice this whole time, but... Let's try it again. Ah, still got it. I kinda wanna do Mamudo Barian, but I feel like Anubis is gonna block it. And I'm gonna waste a turn. Haha. I love reflecting things. I'm glad Miyazu got a roll, though, although, again, it's kind of a random side quest. But I guess if you want that true ending, people will get it. You better not revive them. Too bad I got the AoE attacks off of Odin and Fion, but honestly I don't need them that much. Also, sometimes his spear disappears. Ow, oh. I should have healed. Nice. Sorry, Anubis, buddy, pal. Also, I wasn't expecting Khonsu to suddenly become, like, have his own entire side quest line. Compared to Odin and Zeus and Hisuki. Where'd your spear go, Odin? Why does it keep disappearing? And imagine how powerful a charged up uh, Murakumo must be. Get someone to do the Domo Gladius thing on me. So, Be safe and guard. Behold. Ha! Idiot. I hate how it keeps- I mean, I like how it saves my menu choice, but the next turn after I guard, I keep hitting guard again by accident.
Ooh, on Mighty Pleroma. What do I get rid of from you, though? You don't need Luster Candy, I guess. Could be a hit with the kids. Kansu. So I couldn't beat you after all, Naho, no matter. Thanks to this, I will have accomplished my goal. Naho, you ended up fighting Kansu, didn't you? You took your time. Well, I wouldn't worry. That was his intent. Thankfully, now we can truly stop him. As with all kings of the past, the pharaoh becomes a god by joining with the god of the sun. And the catalyst for this is the death of the previous king. Ra's protection. As the king, I, Kansu Ra, command you. Grant Miyazu Atsuda the divine power of the king and the title of Ra. Oh, that's the method you were talking about. So I have to kill you. Now deal the final blow. Do so and Miyazu's life will be saved. You mustn't let Kansu die. God or otherwise, the girl will be forced to lead the life of a demon. Is that what you want? Do not wish to save her from an unjust death. If you won't do it, then fine. I'll simply take matters in my own hands. What will you do? Miyazu, can you at least say something? She hasn't spoken at all since the fight. Come on, Miyazu. Surely you have some opinion, at least. Stop, Kanzu. Before you can make a move, Miyazu... Oh, finally. I think, according to what I read, it doesn't matter what you pick. Probably Miyazu speaks up regardless. It probably gives you, like, points for the different endings, though, or something like that. Depending on which one you pick. I'm fine with things the way they are, so please don't leave me, Kansu. Please. So you knew. You knew that I would have to die in order to pass on the power of the king. Yes, Isis told me all about it at the fairy village. Yes, I apologize for my meddling. But Kansu, you must remember, what drew you to Miyazu in the first place? Wasn't it her earnestness in trying to make the most of her short life dis despite what limited time she had? Surely you haven't forgotten that. <laughs> That's right. In the face of death, I might have re might have realized it as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kansu, but thank you. I want to spend what time I have left with you at my side. <sighs> and you will, Miyazu. We'll make the most of your days here together. Aw, that's cute. Except you're coming with me, Kansu. I'm going to summon you as a demon, and you won't be able to spend time with Miyazu at all. <laughs> then with that, we best treat everyone's injuries. I'll take Kansu to Aru. We won't be long, Miyazu. <sighs> Naho, it pains me to say this, but I owe you a great debt. Again, if you ever have need of my power, then I ask you call upon me through fusion. I'll lend you my strength, if only just a little. See, again, how does fusion actually work? Does it, like, pluck you away from wherever you are currently? Does it kill you where you are and resummon you? What happens to the fusion fodder? There's so many questions. Well, now, I suppose we'll be off, then. This is all thanks to your efforts. Truly, thank you, Naho. You obtained two large glory crystals. Nice. Indeed. Oh jeez, do I want high electric pleroma? I mean, it's not very many ways to get it, but... I could get away mana spring. I don't technically need it, but... Oh, it should be nice. You know what, let's get away... Let's get rid of mana spring. Ooh, I got raw. I got Kansu raw and Kansu. So Miyazu, what do you have to say for yourself? Um, hey! Thank you for everything. Don't worry about my well-being or anything. I'm totally fine. Well, we'll see after I destroy the world or recreate the world or whatever. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, that reminds me. I think I'm gonna become a nurse. Um, that's nice and all, but who's gonna teach you? I know it's silly to think about since we don't even know what happened once it's over. But at the very least, I'm happy to have a goal to work towards. Well, good for you, Miyazu. Is that really the end for you? Wait, why do you have something to say? You didn't earlier. Ah, uh, to be in love with a human sounds so romantic. Long, long ago, fairies and humans would fall in love with each other all the time. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad Miyazu got a little bit of a spotlight, even if she didn't have a cutscene associated with it. At least she was kind of relevant for something, so... Good on her. We can make Kansu and Kansu Ra now, that's awesome. So it looks like everyone here has new dialogue.
I suppose it hardly matters. The gods of the Nile's dreams have been all but snuffed out now. Ah, but it's a shame. Part of me longed to see Lord Khonsu's world of peace realized. I'll do it for him. Funny how this... Doing Khonsu's quest is a prerequisite for the secret ending, but I don't think you actually... The secret ending is kind of chaotic and... Not ideal, I think. After all this great upheaval, I wonder how the world would change. Dude, why can't I support Khonsu's idea? Against all expectation, Khonsu has abandoned his cause and chosen to live among mankind. Our lamentation will not sway him. All we can do is await the rule of a new pharaoh. But again, the pharaohs are humans, right? But you guys are demons, but the pharaoh becomes a demon, right? Through the power of Ra. How does this all work? These days, that Khonsu boy's got a different look in his eyes. It's been quite a journey seeing him grow up. Seeing all the potential ahead of him. I think I can content myself with that, eh? Oh, Khonsu's not even here himself. Okay. So originally, when we came to this area, this bridge was blocked off because there was an angel here and he said, no, you're not going this way. It's too dangerous or whatever he said. So now we're going to explore. It looks like there's a quest over here. I don't remember which quest this is, but I think it has to do with Amano Zako. Yeah, you better run, Bareth. They are so hard to catch once they start running away from you. I tried to catch one earlier, but their horses make them so fast. But that's okay. I was able to fuse one later on, so not a big deal. I'm almost at 75%. On my compendium. I think I'm at like 68 or 69. I need to get to 75% because you get a special item from Sophia and that unlocks a quest later on from Maria. <laughs> hey hey I don't like the looks of that. We don't get out of here now we're dead. You asked the panic demon what's going on. Some demon went on a rampage the second the full moon came around. Freaky little thing was crazy powerful for how small it was. Hmm that looks familiar. I managed to get away, luckily, but this one angel stood his ground and got himself killed. Unless you got a death wish yourself, you better steer clear of this place any time there's a full moon, seriously. Am I supposed to come back here when there's a full moon? Mm, there's something weird about this place. Last time I came here, my head got all hazy. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, are you worried about me, huh? Are you? Oh, hi, there's a Mimon. E. No be here in a while. Shocked to find a huge hole. Be in bad shape if caught in Boom Boom. I have so much glory now. I need to beat that last abscess to get the last couple miracles, but I heard that it's actually quite difficult. <laughs> I want to go back with more preparation. Can I go down here? Oh, I can. Oh, jeez. How do I get back up? Hope I can run up this. Okay, good. Sometimes the game doesn't let you run up certain slants. Okay, it's a new moon. Am I just supposed to run around until it's a full moon? Let's see. Hey, Jack. Oh, thanks, Jack. Fun little diversion, though. Ooh, Mitamas. I only I need a ton of maka because I want to fuse some really good demons and the compendium costs a lot of money to summon demons that are really powerful. So right now I turned off all the other mitamas except for the maka ones. Luckily I can kill them with almighty moves except in the last area. In the last area the almighty moves bring them to like near death but they're not quite there just yet. Not quite powerful enough to do that. I don't think you can actually. Unless you use, like, buffs or something like that. But that's okay, I usually kill them and... I just, like, take my Nahobino... And I hit them with Divine Aerofall, and then I pass everyone else's turns to get back to them, and then I... Do Divine Aerofall again. Or Murakumo. But... Yeah, they don't seem to do the trick. Okay, let's just run around in circles until it's a full moon again.
There we go. Be careful. Amano Zako's on the verge of going berserk. I can't... I can't hold it back. You... You... You have to take my power! Oh, okay. We're right into it. I thought she might transform or something, but she just kind of stays... tiny. Oh, she's only 51. I can do this. I thought maybe she'd be a bit higher. looks pretty intense. It's kind of like on the box art of this game, there's a Amanozako, she's like casting a wind spell and her eyes are all like this, like no pupils. I guess this is where it comes from. Okay, I get to kill her really quick. I should have done these while I was on level. I think they would have been a bit more fun, but also a pain in the butt. <laughs> I just wanted to get the ending over with, so that's why I sped through the rest of the game. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Sorry, Manazako, I'll probably kill you right on the next turn. I was expecting all the optional side quest boss to be close to Shiva's level, but... I guess that's not the case. Obtained a concentration of Amanazako's power. We can use it as an essence. Okay, cool. What? Where is this? Where? Where am I? What happened to me? Oh, I remember! I couldn't control my power and started losing it, right? Totally. I still know how to feel about you, because, like, when we first met you, you were all like Sundari, like, I don't care about you, but I get to come along with you. It's not like I care about you, but here's a present. And later you're all like valley girlish, like, totally, let's do this. Oh my gosh. And then now you're all, and then sometimes you're all like suddenly serious during that last area. And then now you're all back to normal. Uh, you're just a weird mishmash of personalities. And you, you swooped in and saved me, didn't you? Seriously, you did, didn't you? Oh, oh, oh! And then you took my power, huh? Looks like you got a little something out of it, at least. <laughs> Good thing. <sighs> I'm so tired. <laughs> well, I guess I'll see you around. Bye-bye! Hey, that's it. Also, like, I'm pretty sure I kind of read up a little bit about Amanazako, and she is related to, obviously, Japanese mythology, and has a relationship with Susano and Tsukuyomi, but I can't remember what exactly it is. That's it? Okay. Also, I was reading up also that uh, Hayataro was featured a lot in the promotional materials. A lot of people were excited about his role because if you look up the mythology of Hayataro, it's actually a pretty wholesome story about a good doggo. And originally, Hayataro was supposed to be a companion for your, for your Nahobino. In fact, you were originally supposed to be able to ride him around as a mount on the overworld, but they had to scrap the idea because I think it was a little hard to implement, and then they had to change his rule in the story, and they kept it under wraps until the game came out. But, I mean, obviously he kind of got... He's important to the story compared to most demons, but he still kind of got shafted. Not to mention, I still can't get over the fact that he's only level 40 when he joins you. Like, come on, I want to use him. He even gets two unique skills, but, like, at the point that you get him in that last dungeon, there's no way, right? Unless you save him for a new game plus. Too bad. Poor Hayataro. Has any more light been shed on what caused the giant hole? Really now, so a demon lost control of their powers, is it? Sounds quite dangerous. Oh. Hmm, so you defeated the demon responsible. Ah, well done. It seems this incident has been resolved. Very well then, take this as a reward.
Wait, that's it? Okay, I guess we'll go look for Amanazako. It seems you're the demon Amanazako is so fond of, yes? In that case, I have a request. There is a large radio tower in Shiba known as Tokyo Tower. There you will find my companion. I ask that you speak with him and help us to achieve our ultimate goal. Ah, splendid. As I have said, you will find my companion at Tokyo Tower in Shiba. I humbly request that you meet with him and lend your assistance. I received word from my companion. You must be the demon Amanazako is so fond of. I ask that you bring Amanazako here. I imagine you wish to know the reason. Hmm. Very well. It is only fair that I tell you, seeing as you've decided to help. As you can see, this world is coming to an end. And in order for us Tengu to band together once more, we require a leader. A great Tengu. For that purpose, we enacted a ritual to transfer a soul into the remains of a proto-fiend. Hoping to create a great Tengu as a result. What's a proto-fiend though? We've never actually defined it. That is how Amanazako came to be. Wait, so she's a proto-fiend? However, upon her awakening, she immediately became rampant and fled. Perhaps it was due to the uncontrollable power locked within her. We have been doing all we can to get her back. And it was then that we found you. Now you know why it is so imperative that we get her back. I ask that you bring her here immediately. I will be waiting here until then. Let us proceed. Wait, how do you know that she's over there? Okay. Again, does she not get a choice in this matter? Do I not get a choice in how I proceed about this? Oh, you're literally right here. Just chilling. Hey, hey, are you gonna take me with you, are you? Oh, I guess this is where she usually is if you want her as a companion. Well, but I have Jack... I have Jack with me. Wait, if I take her with me and then go fulfill the quest, does she leave and then I no longer have a navigator? Because I don't really want a navigator right now. Okay, let's go back, I guess. Hey, so Manozako, you know, I asked you to come with me? Well, I fooled you! I tricked you! I'm bringing you here! It was a trap! Ah, you've brought Amanazako to us! The future of the Tango is secure at last! Now all that remains is for you to hand her over! Well, this music does not make me want to hand her over. Why the hesitation? Hand her over now! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you saying you're gonna save me? Wow, I'm torch! Like, seriously! So, you refuse to part with her. Then I suppose we'll just have to take her by force! Why'd I even bring her here, then? Like, what's... What's this logic? I suspected this might happen. As such, I appealed to Ishizuchi's on Hokibo to summon one who would fight on our behalf. Come forth, Sao Gongen! Oh, this is new music. Or... It's either new music or music I just haven't heard very often. 75. Come on! Eighteen damage. Oh no, what will I do? Feels like a waste to use Gungnir on the Tengu.
Well, goodbye. Nice crit. You know, I heard from some people they were saying that don't bother taking critical aura or like charge or concentrate or Imperial's animus because you should just get a supporter character to use uh, the charge skill, Donum Gladi. So it makes a support character boost a physical character so you don't waste a turn. But I don't have a character that does Donum Gladi really well yet. And I don't want to rely on them, so that's why I haven't done that yet. So, so for now. Odin and Fionn can charge their own skills. Plus, Fionn doesn't have Pierce on his skill innately. Okay, Fionn, let's do this. I'll even let your animation play out. Hey! I'm a fan of Eden. I know. How can this be? Even Zhao Gongan's might was not enough to defeat you. We cannot hope to win back a Manazako from one so powerful. It seems we must admit defeat. As of now, we shall withdraw from this matter. Wait, that's it? Fury Talisman. No idea I was using you as a bodyguard, huh? Oh, are you mad at me? I mean, are you? Well, anyway, it turns out that my other half, I mean, the soulmate that I've been searching for. Did you even get me a chance to respond to whether I was mad at you? Don't tell me that I'm your soulmate. Was you? No! <laughs> the demon part of you is the protofine Algami, right? I was created using a protofine as a base. It's why I feel so comfortable around you. What is a protofine? Are they artificial? Are they robotic? But how did the Tengu get their hands on one? I have so many questions. My soulmate's been with me this whole time. That's cheesy, but... Okay, I think this whole guy bodyguard thing has run its course. Don't you? After all, we're meant to be, you and me, right? Totally! Now, it's my turn to help you. I'm gonna join you as one of your demons. Oh, and... Don't expect me to say nice to meet you or any of that sappy stuff. She sub she's subverting the game by saying that she's not going to say that. Oh. Did she just join me right up? 76, not bad. Heavenly counter. Unique chance to counter strength based attacks with a weak dark attack. Lowers target's attack rank, one rank by three for three three turns. Mazioberian, energy drain, meteorahan. Then she learns Zambarian, Almighty, Pleroma, Thunder Rain. Not bad. I mean, not bad, but not like amazing, amazing. But well, welcome aboard, Amanazako. I thought you were kind of annoying. I was kind of wary about you at first, but you know, you're okay. You're okay. So that brings us to the end of this episode. Now, we haven't done all the side quests just yet, but I think these are the most plot relevant ones. So we did 
Fion and the Fairy Village, Kansu and Miyazu, Amanozako. So I think I'll save the rest of the side quests for another episode because those are the ones that are a little bit less plot relevant so we can kind of separate them out and prioritize. So thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!